was unaware of red flags. Nobody had ever really told me what to look out for as a sign that a group might have a sinister agenda. The first one being every single person in that group was unquestioningly devoted to and obedient towards the leader. He told us that he had wandered the length and breadth of India for nine years straight wearing nothing but a saffron robe and carrying a beggar's pot. Anytime a person tells you a really extravagant story about themselves, but they have no witnesses and there's nobody to corroborate any of the so-called evidence or facts, that's a major red flag. I want to add to the conversation uh, a good friend of mine, Rick Allen Ross. He's a cult specialist, deprogrammer, and author of a compelling book, Cults Inside Out, How People Get In and Can Get Out. Thanks for joining us. It's good to see you again. Good to see you. Thank you. Uh, when you're listening to uh, what Sarah's saying, particularly about this one figurehead, the center of all truth, that's, a, that's the big red flag, right? Well, that would be the, one of the core characteristics of a destructive cult, would be an absolute authoritarian leader who is always right, who is the defining element and driving force of the group, and who becomes an object of worship. Add to that also coercive persuasion to gain undue influence, what Sarah talks about, basically breaking people down, making them feel insecure about who they are, about uh, whether, they're do whether they're good enough. And then finally, the kind of destructive behavior that Sarah's talking about, hurting children, hurting individuals, exploiting them for money, would put the group in a destructive category. But what I think most people don't realize is that bait and switch con that's going on. Because first of all, Sarah is in Vancouver and she's thinking, I just want to get some good exercise. A lot of my friends are doing yoga. Yoga is not harmful. So you go in and you think everything's okay. And gradually they pull you in deeper and deeper, layer by layer. And that's the way that people really don't know that they're getting conned. And when it started, it was just all copacetic, right? It was like Absolutely. we're all on the same plane as far as what's important, what's not important. Mm -hmm. Everybody seemed to be focused on the same things. Yes. But then it started getting about recruiting and were you good enough and all of that. Right. You claimed there was body shaming. How did yeah. that come in? The guru would single people out who he considered to be less attractive or less fit, and he would truly body shame them. There was one girl there who was overweight, and one day he was giving us all something that's called prasad in India, which is like food that has been blessed in the temple. And each of us who went up, he gave one piece. When that girl went up, he gave her the entire tray and said, I know you want all of this anyway, might as well eat it. And nobody stood up for her. And I went to comfort her afterwards because she was kind of in the corner feeling bad about herself. And she told me, don't empathize with me or I'll drag you down to my level. And we were told if we felt sympathy or empathy for other people, it won't help them. It'll just harm us because we'll be taking on their suffering or their karma. It creates a population of people who will never support each other. You know, if the guru wants to attack somebody, the whole community attacks that person. And this was about obedience to the guru, yes, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's all about there's one authority yeah. and you be obedient to the authority. Exactly. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.